With all the hype surrounding cholesterol and heart disease, I urge you to watch this and re-watch it so you can be armed with the truth about cholesterol and why lowering it will be detrimental to your health. This is cholesterol. It doesn't look so scary, does it? Over the past 20 years, you've heard a lot about this little life-essential molecule. You've heard it can be good. You've heard it's probably bad. You may have been told that it's an LDL, and you've been told it can be an HDL. No wonder the message about cholesterol are so confusing. No one can agree on what it is. What it is, is just cholesterol. There's only one kind of cholesterol you'll ever encounter, and that is appropriate cholesterol. What's confusing about cholesterol is that you've probably never even been told the actual role of this little light essential molecule. You've been told it's bad and clogs arteries, but that you also need it. You've been told you have to have it low, but not too low. Way confusing. So the easiest role to remember is that cholesterol is literally the super glue that holds you together. Every one of your 70 trillion cells has to be held together so the stuff inside of the cell cannot leak out, and then the stuff outside of the cell doesn't invade inside. Think about it this way. When you scrape your knee as a kid, this represents cells breaking apart. A lot of cells breaking apart. You were taught that white blood cells rush to the scene and clotting factors so you can fight infection and stop the bleeding. What you were never told is that in order for you to heal up properly, lots and lots of cholesterol was rushed to the scene to aid in the repair of those broken cells and form them back together. Without cholesterol getting there in a timely manner, you would never survive an injury. But what forms after an injury? A scab usually. What happens inside your body? In your arteries? They get injured and cut by our lifestyle choices, by how you eat, by how you move, and by how you think. Cholesterol is just doing its job by repairing the damage. A scab forms, or you know as plaque, and everything is great. The problem is that if you keep having injuries, then you get more plaques or more scabs. Being told cholesterol is responsible for clogged arteries is like being told tire skid marks are responsible for car accidents. What you're seeing is the after effects. Other vital roles of cholesterol have to do with the makeup and basis of your hormones. These are the proteins that communicate between your cells to aid you in growth, healing, and repair. One important hormone that is often called a vitamin is vitamin D, essential for every function in your body. But the most important aspect of cholesterol is the makeup of your central nervous system. This is the very system that runs and coordinates every cell in your body. For your heart to beat, your lungs to breathe, and your toes to wiggle, this nervous system needs max health to function, and cholesterol is a vital nutrient for the development and health of your nervous system. I had mentioned that there's only one kind of cholesterol. LDL and HDL are not cholesterol. They are carriers of cholesterol. In other words, cholesterol is a big fat diva and needs to have an escort to make it to any destination. Remember, cholesterol is the super glue that holds you together. Very important in tissue repair. Tissue gets damaged from our choices, i.e. toxicity and deficiency. Why LDL is so vital is because it's really fast. Think of it like a sports car. It's fast, but can't hold too many people. Not many cholesterol molecules can attach to LDL to be transported to the site of damage to repair it. So the liver sends out the troops and sends more than enough to err on the side of caution. This is why LDL gets a bad rep. There's plenty around the site of injury, or plenty around the site of that plaque. Again, this is like giving tire skid marks a bad name because they seem to always be around car accidents. LDL is vital to your ability to heal. Without it, cholesterol would not get to the injury to repair the damage. Remember, we routine, routinely injure our internal organs by our choices. Now, HDL is the media hero. Drugs are developed around this trying to increase HDL production though not successful because adding a toxic drug into your system will actually shut down the production of HDL. Now the role of HDL is to pick up the leftover cholesterol from the event that caused damage. The body intelligently sends out more than enough cholesterol to repair the injury. When that event is over, HDL 
is then taken to the scene to pick up the leftover cholesterol because cholesterol is so valuable to the body. There's no desire to waste even one molecule. The cholesterol is then taken back to the liver to then be recycled. Why a drug will never produce these results is because a drug is a toxin and will cause injury to the body. In other words, it's a stress. Ever see the list of side effects? That's because there's damage being done when you introduce a toxic chemical into your body. In other words, in times of stress, HDL production is limited because you don't want the cleanup crew gathering cholesterol when cholesterol is needed to repair the damage. Now that you know the real role of cholesterol, let's destroy the research that has been used to dupe you and billions of others into taking drugs to lower this essential molecule. In the classic Lipitor commercial, they boast that they have done 19 years of clinical research. This is very false. What actually happened is they did clinical research 19 years ago. Any research during the past 19 years has been done on you, the consumer, the general public, to see what side effects arise and who dies from taking their drug. Think about it. Why would a drug company who just had approval of their drug keep spending money, money, money to do further research? doesn't happen. You're the guinea pig. How they did the trial was they split the group into two. One that got the placebo or like a sugar pill or one that got Lipitor. Now I want you to notice the little asterisk next to Lipitor. It's because those people that got Lipitor also got a change in diet. Not very fair, is it? So let's look at the results. If you break the groups down into people and groups of 100 and studied them for three and a half years, there were three heart attacks over a three and a half year span for the placebo group. For the Lipitor group and also change in diet, there were two heart attacks of the hundred over the three and a half years. Not very impressive, is it? It just depends on your perspective. If you are the manufacturer of Lipitor, they like to advertise that 33% of people have reduction in heart attacks. Well, one out of three is 33%, but I feel this is unethical reporting. The true reporting should state that it takes 100 people over a three and a half year span to have one less heart attack than doing nothing at all. If it took me three and a half years to get only one person out of 100 to feel a little better, I would be stocking shelves at the grocery store. Best of all, none of these heart attacks were fatal. There's no difference in death rate between the placebo in the Lipitor group. I know I can help people prevent heart attacks at a way higher success rate than Lipitor with my True Health program. Now, it's inevitable that you will have blood work done sometime in the future. It could be for life insurance policy, it could be for annual checkup, it doesn't matter. And there will be a cholesterol value in that report. You will probably be told it's too high or that your HDL and LDL are out of balance. Before you accept a prescription for cholesterol, go back, watch this video again so you totally understand that cholesterol is essential and lowering an essential molecule in the body is never going to move you towards health. After you watch the video over and over again and share it with your friends and family, make sure your doctor can answer these questions correctly or run and never look back. If he or she answers correctly, they would never put you on a drug to lower your cholesterol, at least ethically. So question number one. What is the purpose of cholesterol? Again, go back and review slide number three for the proper answer, but remember it's literally the super glue that holds you together. You need it. Question number two. What are the roles of LDL and HDL? Not which is good and which is bad. There's no such thing. Both are good and both are appropriate. And question three. What proof is there that lowering cholesterol lowers the death rate from heart attacks? This is easy because it's zero according to their own research that is being used to dupe you into taking the drug. You are using their own ammo to defeat their argument. It won't be an easy conversation with your doctor. And now you know. And as they say it in G.I. Joe, knowing is half the battle. So take this time to share the video with anyone you care about on cholesterol lowering drugs. It's evident that our healthcare system gets a big fat after caring about our health Learn more and follow at www.drkirkperkins.com. Health is by choice, not by chance.